In the summer of 2022, Calvin Phillips signed for Manchester City from his boyhood club Leeds United for £42 million. Phillips was destined to replace Fernandinho who was leaving the club on a free in that same summer after captain in his side to back-to-back -back Premier League titles. But today I'll be discussing how that move didn't really work out as planned. But before we begin, please like the video and comment down below what you want to see next and your opinions on the topic. And also the most important part is don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends because it helps me grow the channel and it just helps me produce better content for you in the future. But with the self promo out of the way, let's get in to the failed Calvin Phillips project. <laughs> Phillips was brought in to challenge Rodri for his position in the starting 11 and give a suitable option for rotation to allow Rodri some rest in the coming 22-23 uh, season. And well, oh how we were wrong. Because Phillips would pick up a shoulder injury, you know, shoulder injuries are bad. Never get shoulder injury, trust me. Listen to me, shoulder injuries are really bad. Uh, but yes, um, Phillips would pick up a shoulder injury in August and that would keep him out for 18 games of the season which wasn't really an ideal start to a City career with him not returning until early November. Philip now had a lot of work to do to try to give off a good impression to Pep and the City fans, especially seeing as uh, Rodri is in red-hot form at the start of the season and that form will continue on right until the very end. Age also wasn't on Calvin's side with him and Rodri being the same age, meaning it was now or never for him to make his mark. There was no waiting until Rodri got a bit older and then to take his place and be a bit of an understudy. It was now or never because they were both going to reach the latter end of their career at the exact same time. And fans, including myself, would become even more frustrated with the signing of Phillips because of the departure of Lavia. Southampton would sign 18-year-old Roman Lavia for £14 million from Manchester City that same summer. Lavia was regarded as one of the best up-and-coming talents in the City Academy at the time for his um, performances in Premier League 2 for the under-18s and just all-round stuff that he was doing around the club. And his move to Southampton would give him the ability to get a lot more first team matches under his belt. Lavia would go on to impress fans across the country, shining their very lacklustre Saints team that was relegated from the Premier League. Lavia would even go on to dominate Calvin Phillips in a 2 0 win over Man City in the League Cup at St Mary's, a game that I was unfortunately in attendance for and. Well, this game was really the exact moment that I realised that Pep and the recruitment team made a mistake with the signing of Phillips and, and the sale of Lavia, and that is an opinion I hold to this day, hence why this video is being made. Phillips would end his first season with zero goals, zero assists, 21 appearances, and 593 minutes. Oh, and three major trophies under his belt. So it had its positives and it had its negatives, but would his second season start a lot better? That's the rule, right? That under Pep, players will find form in their second season and, and they'll become the best po possible player they can be because it takes time to adapt to Pep's tactics. Well, unfortunately not for Calvin. Because as of writing this on the 15th of December, <clears throat> obviously 2023 of course, Phillips has made nine appearances with 305 minutes under his belt and his performances haven't been outstanding with him reaching nowhere near the levels that rodri has been playing at, which is obviously understandable. No one can blame him for that because Rodri is the best DM in, in his world and he's a, in the world and he's the best at what he does. But Phillips also isn't reaching the levels that he reached for Leeds and the ones he reaches for England. So what's the point? He's wasting his time, he's wasting wage bills, and he's also wasting a spot in, in the side. The only thing he really adds to us is a positive, which is a homegrown player, but is it really is it really necessary? And it's also been heavily rumoured that he'll be leaving City in January with the front runners being Juventus and that being the likely destination for him to take a trip to Italy. And well, after watching his performance in the UCL um, a few days ago against Red Star, and mostly his celebration after scoring his first City goal, I realised that, that that was his goodbye. And that, that penalty that he scored was a sending off present. That pity penalty that he scored wasn't a confidence booster. It was so he could go out with a bang, I guess. He could score his first Champions League goal, score his first goal for City. And, and that, was, that was it, really. 
And am I sad to see? Am I sad to see Calvin go? No, not not really. As, as harsh as that sounds, I'm not really like. It doesn't really add anything to the squad. Like I'm not really sad to see him go. <clears throat> do I obviously? Do I wish him in the best? Yeah, of course, of course, I wish him the best, and I want him to succeed wherever he goes. <clears throat> Unless that's to another Premier League team, then we can slow down on the success part. But and am I sad that it didn't work out? Also, yes. You know, I, I wanted things to work. I wanted Phillips to be a good player. I wanted him to be able to to fill in for Rodri. But realistically, we've seen how much we've struggled about Rodri this season with us losing every game that he's missed this season. So we need a backup that is capable of filling in for Rodri at a higher level than Phillips has. And it's just... Like people say Kovacic. I don't ever want to see Kovacic play as a six again. Watching Kovacic play as a six is one of the most painful experiences I've I've ever seen. He like he's way too rash and reckless to be a six. Like people say Fernandinho and Rodri were were rash and reckless. They were more calculated in the in their fouls, their their tactical fouls slowing the game down. It was a lot more calculated. Covers is rash, reckless. And I don't want <clears throat> to see him be a lone six. Ooh. How many with voice there? That's not good. But yeah, um I don't want want to see him play as a lone six because it's just I just don't think that's what he's what he's good at and I don't think that's like the best uh like the best thing for him but you know let me let me know in the comments who you think a, a suitable replacement for uh um for Phillips is um and if you think Kovacic is is you know has the ability to play as to play as a six but yeah that's all I really wanted to talk about really just a nice short video discussing the fact that this this Phillips transfer has probably been Pep's worst signing because Going through his signings, I'm just thinking Bravo's up there a hundred percent. That was that was awful. I, 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 Bravo and Phillips were on the same level, I think, of signings. Obviously, Nelito, he was just someone he wanted to bring over from Spain to, to, to sort of help Pep sell. So I can't. And, and Nelito also played like well at the start of that season. He just got homesick and and, and went home. And you know that wasn't a bad signing. Obviously, Sané. Stones, Gundogan, um, Danilo. Maybe, maybe you could put Danilo in there, but no. Yeah, I, I've. He's he's he's. I'd probably say Pep's worst sign and maybe second worst. Obviously, with um, with with Claudio Bravo being in there, of course. But yeah, it is obviously sad that it hasn't worked out. But we we've got to be ruthless at this point and and just be like, well, you're not. Um, you're not good enough. You can't play because Rodri, Rodri can't keep playing as much football as he has. Like, he he played way too many games last season. Um, he's picking up more cards this season. He, he's losing games due to suspension, and we can't risk playing with someone that's clearly not good enough to be in the team, especially in one of those important positions. When it comes to to being in a team, you can't have a you can't have a below par centre back. You can't have a below par goalkeeper and you can't have a below par DM or else you will just be picked apart and you will lose games because they are some of the most crucial players on the pitch. You can you can get away with having a below par striker because you can have other people that that make up for it. Roberto Firmino was a very, very below par finisher. Not 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 footballer, he was a very, very good footballer. Below par finisher. But because of Salah's goal scoring ability, they could get away with it. Jesus, very, very below par finisher. We were able to get away with it. Why? Because we had other people that could finish their chances. But DM, centre back, and goalkeeper, as we've seen with playing with Garcia and Otamendi in, in the um, 1920 season, as we've seen with Claudio Bravo in Pep's first season, and as we've seen now with Phillips. We do, these are the most important p positions on the pitch, and you can't be you can't be carrying passengers in those positions, unfortunately. But that's all I've got for today's video. Don't forget to like the video if you've liked. Comment down below your opinions on the Philip situation, and also what you want to see next. Also, remember, don't forget to subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I've been Nathan, and I will see you in the next video.